This is an interview with Mr. Melvin Johnson of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute's Oral History Project. I'm Dr. Horace Huntley. We're presently at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Today is October 30th, 1996. Okay, Mr. Johnson, I want to thank you for uh, Mr. Johnson, I want to thank you for taking time out of your business schedule to come and sit down and talk with mm -hmm. us today about what it was like growing up in Birmingham, about the movement, and any other thing that you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and where were you born? Born right in Jefferson County. In Jefferson County. Yeah. Where what part of the county were you were you born in? Right, right out there on the right, right out there on Lemon Coat. Eleven Court. Oh, okay. Five twelve. Eleven Court. Where? Right on Eleven Court. Right on Eleven Court. Yeah. That East Thomas. Oh uh, yeah, East Thomas. Uh huh. Okay. And we not love East Thomas. Not from this East Thomas. My home is a little small place, but I still love it. Better not do anywhere else. Yeah. Well, that's that. The rest of them say 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 they don't like it, but I do. I mean, like it. The it's rabbit in the brow, and the brow, and you go back to it. Right back to it. Yeah. Well, then. Uh, they, they always say there's no place like home. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, did you have brothers and sisters? How many brothers and sisters did you have? It was seven of us. Seven of you. And where did you fit in that? Huh? Where Where were you? Were you the oldest, the youngest? Yeah, I'm the oldest. You're the oldest one. Yeah, I'm okay. the oldest. I got two brothers living now, uh -huh. and one sister that's four. Of us. So the one next to me, he died in 1991. Oh, okay. He was living in San Francisco. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Did you ever get to visit him out there? Yeah, I visited him out there when he was sick. Mm -hmm. He had uh, stomach cancer. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so I had to go out there and stay with him. So he had bought a brand new Explorer mm -hmm. truck. And he didn't have it four months before he died, but he drove it till he couldn't drive it. So he gave it to me at 2,200 miles on it when I brought it back in. Mm -hmm. And he had a pickup truck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he um, used to do a lot of drinking too, you know, and I used to get at him by it, so he said, well, you know, die with something anyway. <laughs> so that's where he chose to yeah. go, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wait, your mother and father, were they from Birmingham? My father, he came when we talked, and she was from Birmingham. Oh, okay. Uh, so he was from Wetonka. Yeah. Did you still have relatives down there? Did you ever go down there to visit when you were young? When I was, when I was small, he 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 carried me down there to see his mother, but I forgot about all the folk. I don't know whether we got a relative down there now or not. Mm -hmm. Well, in um, as as you grew up, what kind of work did your did your mother and father do? My mother, she was a housekeeper, and he worked at the real apartment up there. When it really the fun, uh -huh. he said, you find that fire up there. Oh, he did? Oh, yeah. he, was, he was the baller man up there. Yeah, you know. Where I was am. that? Where was that located? Really the fun? Yeah. Up there where the truck wild in there now. That's oh. really the fun. Oh, okay. You'd be the really the fun. That's where he worked. Oh, I see. Chuck wild in the uh -huh. truck wild hotel now. Right. Oh, yeah. So it was really a park. Huh? The, it was an apartment complex. Yeah, really a park. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so your mother worked at home. Yeah. Did she didn't. She did. She ever do it outside work or anything? No. Mm -hmm. You know, work back down there was easy. They went to work work back down no way. Yeah. Right. It's like women working now. Right. No job back down. Mm hmm So they stayed at home. And took care of children. Yeah. Uh, well, where did you start first grade? No, I started first grade out in East Tom. Mm-hmm. And you hope. You go uh, after church. Oh, your, your school was in the church at that time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and how long were you there at New Hope? I don't know. I was there, I was there a long time. Mm -hmm. And after you got. They built a school up on the hill up there. You all remember when they built that school out in these tunnels up on the hill? Mm -hmm. You don't remember about these tunnels. No, I know a little bit about it. Do you know, did you know the Geysers? No. 
I noted Miss Gall and Miss Guy was teaching up there. Oh, okay. Right up on top of the hill, mm -hmm. Melbourne Court. Okay. Well, what do you remember most about uh, those days in, in school up there in East Tunnel? Well, what I remember most about the school, I enjoy going. Why do you enjoy going? Yeah, I enjoy going. Yeah, why? What, what, what was what was so good about it? Well, I, <laughs> the thing about it, I, I, I tried to learn while I was up there what they taught me. I tried, what they taught me, I tried to learn. Right. Yeah. Well, I, were you close to your teachers? Huh? Were your teachers, were you close to your teachers? Do you have any favorite teachers? No, well, they were just, they were just two good teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you had two teachers in the school? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then um, after you left there, where did you go? Did you go to Tuttle School after you left? Uh, yeah, I, lived, I left East Tunnel out there. We moved up here on Lena Rig up here. Then I went to Tuttle School. Mm -hmm. And then after that, went over there to Lincoln. Okay. And after you left Lincoln, where did you go? Went to West Point, Charlie called my mother, sister, take it with her. Okay, why did, why did you leave? Why did you go to uh, live with your, your aunt? Uh, we didn't have no other, no other child but living with her. She had to see her, see her after. Take what, care of that happened? Huh? Why? What? She had to see after. What, did something happen in your family? Well, my mother died. Oh, okay. And my dad, he went back to money coming down there, so he, so that folks she had, she had to take us. Okay, so your mother died. Yeah. And then your she, father. Yeah, she died in nineteen, yeah, in nineteen thirty-two. Hmm. And after she died, your father went back to Montgomery. Yeah, he went to Montgomery and went on by the bed. Just left it, left the children with your aunt, or yeah. just left the children there. Just left, just left, left so, with him. So did all of the children, all of your brothers and sisters go to live with your aunt in West Point, Georgia? Yeah, all but one. The other one, the oldest girl, she lived with my aunt and we had an all over there. Mm -hmm. She kept us, she raised her. Mm -hmm. What did you do after you got to West Point? Wait. What kind of work did you do? Wake on God, wake on the farm, and went around looking for work and wake on the farm. Mm -hmm. Made what money we could. Oh yeah, yeah. And how long? How long were you there in West Point? Stayed down at West Point the other about. Stayed down there about ten years. Mm -hmm. And left then went on up there. I wake up in Randolph County. You know that Randolph County? You really talk about? I've heard of Randolph County. But they had trouble with that school up there. Dowie. <laughs> yeah, we Dowie. They called it Rand. It's Randolph County, mm -hmm. but it's we Dowie, Alabama. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you spent some time with that. What did you do in Redowie, uh, in Randolph County? What? What kind of work were you doing there? Farm. You're farming, yeah, okay. They were out some white folks up there. I was all right. What were you farming? Huh? What kind of farming? What crops? We raised, we raised cotton and corn and everything else. Mm -hmm. So you were living on somebody else's? Uh, living on their property. Uh, were you married at the time? Married? Mm -hmm. No, I'm too young to marry. Oh, yeah? Because <laughs> I'm married. I'm married in 42. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I was born. Yeah, right here. Mm -hmm. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then you you uh, worked in Randolph County, and then you eventually came back to Birmingham. When did you come back to Birmingham? I came back to Birmingham about 19, oh, about 1939. Mm hmm and what did you do? Did you move back then to East Thomas? No, I, lived, I stayed in Lawwood with one of my aunts over there. Mm -hmm. Got me a job at the Birmingham Stove and Ring and worked out there a while. Where did you do it out there? Oh, I was out there, uh, I was out there pushing that pig iron around in a big bucket, where they, where they mold it. Mm -hmm. That's what I've done. Did you have a union out there? Out there, did you have a union out there at that time? No. But no union? I didn't stay there for about two months. Oh, okay. Well, I could, the man we had out there was I could I couldn't put up with him, so I left. Is that right? Yeah. Where did you go when you left there? 
but I got me a job at the uh, Banky Hotel. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing there? You know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Kept suiting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long were you there? I was up there. Oh, I don't know. I looked up about three or four months. Mm -hmm. yeah, where did you go after you left there? You had some jobs, man. Yeah, because I chased young, young men. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I was on one on a job out of land, that man didn't treat me right. <laughs> I would I, I would leave him and go somewhere else. Give me another job. Mm -hmm. You would find a job then. Right. But not like it is now. I tell these boys, dang, now if you get a job, you better keep it. Mm -hmm. Different Back, time. yeah. You, so you went out to take a person, that's all the push then. Mm -hmm. well, you would just go in and get you another, get you another little job. But now, if you get a job, now you have to stick to it. Mm -hmm. The job not as plentiful. Yeah, that. like I went out, I feel still. I worked out that 19 years. And I tell some of them fellas, I said, you get a job, sometimes the man says something to you. And you don't lack it. Sometimes you just have to go in and take, keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. So I just stuck with it. I stayed on out there 19 years so I retired. What did you do out there? I went out there, I worked, you know, working in out of them hot places, pushed them big old steel plates up and down the road and all that kind of stuff and scrap. Mm -hmm. I've done some of everything out there. Mm -hmm. Were well, you a member of a union out there? Yeah, you, you have to be a member of the union. Okay. What was the. The USWA? Huh? United Steel Workers? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, USWA, yeah. Yeah. Were you active in the union? Did you participate in any um, any of uh, the official positions? Were you, um, you know, like a union steward or anything of that nature? Well, what, what I've done, I, I paid my dues. And if I they went on strike or something like that, I wouldn't crawl no picket line, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Do you think the union worked to you, to to the advantage, to your advantage, to the advantage of, of black workers at that time? Yeah. So you what? Do you remember what year you went out there? To my plant? Yeah. I went out there in 40, 45. 45. Yeah. You're there for 19 years. Yeah. So that. See, I came off on disability. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I got sick. Came off on disability, high blood, mm -hmm. hard condition. And uh, so <clears throat> I was going to work sick, and I wouldn't know to tell nobody, man. I'm going to tell you the truth. I like to die. Exactly. So I went to work. One Sunday night on 11 or so. And I got sick time, I got out, I got sick of me, I was already sick. And the fellas thought I was gone, you know, I was good at the restroom, you know, and sitting a while till I get to feel a little bit better. And they thought I was gone away, but I wasn't gone out of the way with me. So they found I said, why don't you go to the hospital? I never did want to go to law and go to the hospital. I don't like come out of back it. Hmm. So he went and got the phone. Foreman coming to ask me what was wrong, so I told him. So he called the avalanche out there. The man drove the avalanche. Came up there, said, Why you come to work and you know you were sick? I said, I don't know. When they put me in the hospital, I had bought a brand new car in. And we'll get it for 75, 1975, 70, 70 book mm -hmm. And, uh, so it was the only lot out there. And I told the doctor when he came in the hospital, he gave me a bed. And I told him, told him I asked him, could I go home and come back the next day? He told me, no, he said, we got to put you in the hospital now. Uh -huh. I said, well, I'm going to call lot out there. He said, I called somebody to come get it. Get that boy. Mm -hmm. What year was that? It was in 19, 1965. 1965, murder. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I got it at home now. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they didn't tell me, but the doctor told my wife. They worked on me all and I told her. She told me about that. I got the doctor told her I was afraid of stroke. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. 
They waked on me and they waked on me. Dr. Burrell, he's one of the head doctors. One of the best doctors. Mm -hmm. They waked on me and waked on me till they got, till I got all right. And so they put me on this for business. Mm -hmm. And I was laying up in the water, they had water out there. And everybody was in there, you know, they didn't have a room to have yeah. water. Right. Bed in, you know, bed in, bed out. The fellas get teased me in the hospital. They ain't gonna let you wake no more. I didn't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't want to hear that, but they told the truth. Mm -hmm. So, did you ever have any any incidents out there as you, as you worked, any racial incidents? Because just as you were mm -hmm. getting ready to come off, they had started to supposedly integrate. Well, you see, when I was going to work out there, all that stuff was going on in, I was in it then. So when I go to work in the morning time, I would get off in the evening, three to eleven, no, seven to three, I'd get off in the evening. And me and my wife, we would take right on off and go to the meeting that Monday night, every Monday night, we didn't miss a meeting. Mm. All right, but I was on three to eleven. I couldn't make them like I wanted to make them, but when I was on three to eleven, I, uh, I would go. I would go, I would, I would, I, I would go on my all, on my all day, mass meeting on Monday night. Mm -hmm. And when I was on 11 to 7, I would go to meetings every Monday night on 11 to 7. And when I get off in the morning time, I would go down to the office and get my sign, me and son, you didn't know sunshine, did you? Yeah, I know. Me and sunshine work together and some more of them. We would go up the other side, go up town, we would pick and bereave them. Love them mm -hmm. and pity. Mm -hmm. And then I would go to work that night, and then also on my off day, mm -hmm. I would go down and pick it. So we had some uh, white folks that I had. They were mean, some of them, and some of them was all right. And a lot of them come down and bust by there, and they would tell, they, they would tell some of the fellas that that's one of them. I didn't want to bar with the cane lady, but I didn't pay no attention. Mm -hmm. So some of them fellas out there told me, man, hey, you better leave that stuff alone. The folk going to do so when someone told you. But they, they didn't say nothing to me. Mm -hmm. They didn't say one word to me. So some of the other guys were, were and some scared. Them, yeah, they were yeah. scared. But, but some of them would come up town and, so, I mean, some of them mean it's from the town and stand around looking and peer and see me count a size. And, so y'all keep it up to y'all on the hands, y'all doing a good job. This was some of the fights that was Yeah, yeah, they right? said. Mm -hmm. No, it never bothered me. Mm -hmm. Then I did anyway, which uh you guys still wouldn't bother you about participating. They would not bother. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. They didn't call me all the call me to the office and said nothing. Mm -hmm. But they didn't just, just didn't want nobody to list the money out there. I used to list the money out there, and the fellas would give me money. And they said me about to list money out there. Want to come off and get permission. Mm -hmm. He didn't bother me. Did you go to get permission to solicit the money? No, I just quit. Mm -hmm. To stop, stop, yeah, to stop myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I started to get it up in the neighborhood then. Yeah. Why did you get involved in the movement? Because I found out I, after I got involved in it, started going to the meetings, I liked it. Mm -hmm. So we were there children one Sunday, me and my wife. And, uh, I was in 63, because I was going to feel it being a full 63. Mm -hmm. Three years show up and Reverend Fife would come out. Mm -hmm. What church were you a member of? Huh? What church were you a member of? Then, yes. we used to have a new Baptist church down on Green Mount Avenue. Mm -hmm. But I'm a member of Sarah, and I go Sarah. It's the first church I joined when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. Come out of a little church up on the highway up that little old wooden church. And Reverend Pritchard was pastor of the church. And that's where I joined up there. So I was baptized on 16th Street in the creek out there. And uh, Reverend Pritchard baptized me. And so uh, I went up there to see Reverend Sheldon and Reverend Pfeiffer. So I was in Elder Needham, stayed there 28 years. And Reverend Hardy, he was passing that church in, and he was picking the town out. 
and he's there to the congregation. So they put him in jail up there on 6th Avenue. And uh, so me and my wife, I told, I told my wife, I said, just go up there. I said, you know, already arrested the wood brothers. Well, he wasn't in it himself. He never participated. Mm -hmm. You preach him. Yeah, but he did. He did. He did tell the congregation that. Mm -hmm. and I told me and my wife. I was going home with him. Sunday, I didn't know what to do. We didn't go home. And I said, you have to go up there. And we left church. We went right on up there. And they had old bull car. He had his police. Police was up there. had dogs up there. And sing along folk. And mm -hmm. dogs and biting folk. And yeah. And we went on it. Yeah, we went up and got in. Were you, with the really dogs good. ever, you ever have uh, an encounter with the dogs or with the water? Oh, yeah, they throw the water on us too. Mm -hmm. And Floyd Kane, if you ever know Reverend Floyd Kane, no, walk sir. with a stick. Reverend Floyd Kane, me and him was staring at it yelling. He said, I ain't gonna run. And he was brave. He left him with the Detroit. I reckon he's still living. And little boys had sticks up there fighting back at the dog. They weren't scared, they were brave. And uh and I've been in there ever since. Mm -hmm. Were you ever uh you did pick it and you, you demonstrated? Yeah, I've done a lot of that. Yeah. Were you ever arrested? No, I didn't I didn't go there. Mm -hmm. But I was tackled by the state trooper though. You were tackled by the state trooper? Yeah. When was that? When they when they when they bombed 16th Street Church in Keelum Villa. Right. And I went up that way. And I was walking down Third Avenue. They was already mad. They had chills sitting all over the streets on every corner. Want to know where you're going? It was even dangerous for you to go to work. They were picking at you going to work at night and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they tried to hit me on my shoulder a few times. But, but they didn't scare me. Mm -hmm. They physically attacked you? Yeah. Yeah. And took you down, huh? Yeah. What did they, did they beat you? No. Mm -hmm. Get away from up there and all that kind of stuff. What did they say to you? They told me to get away from up there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't send them to them. I just, well, I just walked on all but And Monday night, mad me was, I went right. They didn't scare me. They didn't scare me. Me to stay away, so I went right on back to mad me. I ain't never stopped. Mm -hmm. did, did, did they scare many people off? No. Mm -hmm. No. So it didn't have the effect that they thought it was going to have. They were trying to harass. Yeah, that's right. That's all, that's all they were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You also um, uh, served as a guard. Yeah, I've been in Armstrong's house. Yeah. Tell me about that. How did, how, how did that operate? Well, Armstrong needed somebody to guard around his house. Someone was watching. Watching him just, uh, I think I went out there to be a show at his house a couple of times. Watched out his house too. And uh, I looked at Armstrong's house up there, they were riding around there. A lot of fellas lot of out there, they had to stand around, they had bricks and things, they throw one at folks, you know, in the car. And big trucks was coming through there. Well, the, the fellas was working, he was on their job, but I don't think that was right, you know, a man on a job and coming through there with a big truck load and they throwing in the truck in and all that kind of stuff. But uh I I, I just said that was that was wrong. Mm -hmm. Now Bull Carter, he had police up there, had tanks up there. Who was throwing into the truck? Some of the bystanders. Okay. Some of the bystanders. Wait, was this in the down here near the church. Oh, that was up there in the community. You know where Cell Street is, right? Right, right. Oh, oh, that one up on the hill. You know that Lloyd Show there? Yeah, yeah, all out in front of his house out there. Okay, so the trucks were passing through it. Was this as a result of a house being bombed or something to that effect? Well, that's what they were mad about. Okay. Because they were throwing bricks and things. Mm -hmm. And that created a, a problem for the Created a problem. Well, I got a cousin. I don't know where. Well, he was not, he got shot. Mm. I don't know where he had not. Did you, did you know who shot him? Well, no police had shot him. Mm. Why did they shoot him? Because they were mad. 
Was he was he part of the crowd that had congregated? Or, or how did they? You know, where was he? Somebody did. When he got a shot, mm-hmm. he was up down. He was up down on South Street up there, but he was just a. Uh, he was he was he was at it too. He was marching too. Mm-hmm. They shot. They shot. Uh, they shot. Uh, he shot one one fellow up there. It might have been him and thought it was thought it was Reverend Shuttleworth, but Reverend it wasn't another Reverend Shuttleworth. Mm-hmm. Reverend Shuttleworth went up that again. Mm-hmm. So they thought they were getting so yeah, yeah, they thought they were getting him. Mm-hmm. Well, when you were God in uh, uh, Mr. Armstrong's house, uh, how many of you were there? Let's see, one. Uh, Carter Gasson, he was there. You know Carter Gasson? Yes, sir. Carter Gasson, me. And uh, he was around some, you know him, to cut out yes. on 16th right. Street. Yeah. He was up there, three of them, okay. that night. Uh-huh. And and how often did you did you go there? So, yeah, I went there just about every, every, every night I was all Wait, when I was on a, when I was on my off day, I would go up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you uh, ever encounter anybody? You know, did anybody ever come by and try to start trouble uh, while you were on duty? No. Did Did you guys have guns? I didn't have them, now, but a couple of them had them now in the bushes out uh, there. Because we would, we would see a truck come out and we got some type of pickup truck with a white fellow in that. Mm-hmm. And they had a way they could get it if they needed it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have that. Mm-hmm. Why did you decide not to have Because Dr. King, he didn't want no violence. They talked about him not to be violent. Mm-hmm. And then while he was young, I remember one day he went down there on the post there and he selected knives and bang weapons. Mm-hmm. He didn't want no bottle. Mm-hmm. When no barber shops were there. Right. Him and Alan that. Mm-hmm. So he would actually go in the barber shop and talk to the guys. Yeah, they'd go in there and talk to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You were you were part of the selected buying campaign downtown when they had the boycott downtown? Yeah, I boycotted it on with I boycotted it on that to me and Sunshine. Yeah. Some of them folks would cross the picket line and go in there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know Sunshine well. I didn't know him well. He was real dog. Sunshine would tell me to hold a picket sign. And he'd go in the store and cuss him out and something. Come on out of there. Would they come out? No, do the small talk. Mm-hmm. And then the, 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 the manager of the store would call the police, and the police would come around and stand up and watch. Mm-hmm. But you guys were never arrested? No. For, for, for uh, no. picketing him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your wife was involved? Yes, yeah, she was in it too. Mm-hmm. She didn't been here, but she was working today. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have children? You have children? I got one doctor, a uh, niece a little old. He's he one on 19 years old. Mm-hmm. I, wish that, well, uh, I wish that I didn't have him, but he was bad. He ain't never mind nobody. Mm-hmm. He got out, there, got out of Mount May by four weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. Were your other brothers and sisters, did they live here in Birmingham? No, the one next to me, he lived in San Francisco. He didn't ever live in there no more. Mm-hmm. He left here, I think, around about 19, 1939, 41. Mm-hmm. He just even went into the Navy. He never lived here no more. And I got one out there now. And he died out there about 20 years. He lived in San Francisco and one lived in Ohio. Mm-hmm. So did you have any other relatives here? I know your sister lived in Norwood, right? Yeah, I got I got a few relatives here now. Mm-hmm. Did any of any of them get involved in the movie? No, no. You were the only one that was My sister but died living here, but was living here but died. Well, her daughter, she had two daughters got in it. They went to jail. Mm-hmm. Were you a registered voter at the time? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
What happened when you went to register the vote? Huh? When you first went to register the vote, what was that like? It was all you mean. They didn't, I didn't have no trouble. You didn't have no problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were there ever times when you, in growing up in the South and in Birmingham particularly, that you may have encountered a, some kind of problem just as a result of your being black here in Birmingham? Did I have problems? Did you have any problem, any racial problems? No, I never had no trouble with nobody. Mm. So you, they basically sort of respected you then. Yeah, they, they treated me all right. Mm -hmm. Well, then the movement, then when you got involved in the movement, you must have saw how they treated other folk. That's why you got involved in the movement then. No, I got in the movement way back down, way back down. Before 63, I was going to some of these. But I, I heard about how the other folks, they, they were treating the other folks, so they were in a big yard, so I joined it too. Mm -hmm. But what was it like uh, living in Birmingham at that time? Well, you know, it wasn't like it, wasn't like it is now. You know, you had to go in the back door. All that kind of stuff, and you had to ride in the back of the bus. You had to drink, had to drink whatever they call it, white water, and they talked like you had black water. Mm -hmm. Had a sign up there, colored in white. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't drink the white water. <laughs> you drink the white water. You had to drink the colored water. You had to drink the colored water, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you saw that that basically just wasn't right. And then when the movement came along, were you involved when they first started the Alabama Christian movement? Well, I was in the Christian movement. And see, I was in, I've been in the Christian movement a long time too. And uh, it hadn't been all, it hadn't been, it hadn't been all that long started. Mm -hmm. It started in 1956. Yeah. So uh, I got involved and I said, well, I'm going to get involved in it too. Mm. So you you then stuck with Shuttlesworth and... Yeah. Uh, who were some of the other people that were involved? That, uh, a lot of them. I tell you, a lot of them were dead. They gone. Was George, was George Price, you know him? Mm. I, know, I don't know George Price, but I know Georgia Price. Yeah, well, he was uh, that was his wife. You know, he separated George Price. He been a little all time, and uh, Jane Plum. You don't know him, do you? No, sir. Jane Plum and his wife, and uh, I tell you, a lot of a lot of them people are gone. Mm. Did you know the Shop Ridges? Shop Ridge. Shop Ridge. They had the uh, funeral home. So I shot it. Yes. And what I'm talking about, I think I, I got at this house a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you come to the man's meeting. He said he carried a pistol to Sunday school. <laughs> he carried a pistol to Sunday school. Yeah, 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 he Martin Luther King? Yes. Oh, yeah, a lot of time. Yeah, a lot of time. It's so uh, we were together in Montgomery a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife, he taken my wife picture, and he's standing up there. I got his picture at home now, Marty. And uh, got two little kids on there. And my picture on that too, all the stand up there together. Mm -hmm. I got his picture on my dress. Yeah. yeah. How do you think things have changed over the time? How has Birmingham changed as a result of the movement? Well, I think Birmingham has made a lot of progress. All kind of movement had not been, but it moved. Birmingham wouldn't be like it is today. Because Fred Shutterworth 
He made Brother Ham like his. Now, a lot of these folk now, they don't even know Fred Shuttleworth. Brother Fred Shuttleworth, my mother can't come in here and help him out. If they hadn't been for Fred Shuttleworth in fight Martin Luther King, you know, Martin Luther King, he couldn't have come in here. You know, he, he was living dead, I'll tell you that. You ever hear him say it? I had not heard him say it, yes. right? It's Carl John, he had said it many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's that's real important because they're yeah. saying that Fred was the leader. Yeah. And he had sort of, sort of set the foundation. Right, that's right. For Dr. King to come in. That's right. Uh, King was known nationally. Yeah, nationally, that's right. Mm -hmm. but, but Fred was the man here. And anyway, Fred Shuttle well, took him over. Took more, uh, more, more appointment. Uh, 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 yeah. And and uh, Doctor King did. Mm-hmm. Doctor, so my uh, uh, friend showed up. He got beat up at Thorpe High School. Were you? Did you know him then? Were you around when he got beat up? I was up there. I know it. Mm -hmm. He got, he said he got scarred all over. Can can to his grave. Mm. And so he never will forget it when they beat him up up there. Mm. He had on he had on a great peppermint suit. And so he tore that suit and broke that watch on his arm. Mm. Stabbed his wife in the hip. Stabbed his wife in the hip. And so that reason he went from running the house. He didn't he wasn't scared. He wasn't a friend. But he said he left running out all kinds of children, couldn't get no job of him. You know, you know that? Yeah, he told me that. Yeah, that's the reason he left him. But he not when he come in, he comes up sometime, he said he's coming back him. Yeah. I said, Oh, you ain't coming back. He said, Yes, I will. And said, If y'all need me, so let, let me know this call is on one hour away. Mm -hmm. Right, he's in Cincinnati. Yeah, he's still active. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. He comes home quite a bit. Too. Yeah, mm -hmm. he sure do. Is that, um, you know, as you have seen Birmingham change over time, what would you say to young people today in terms of a lot of the problems that exist in, in, in Birmingham? What would you say to, to give them advice? As what you I have talked to them, just like that boy I got there. I have talked to them. I said, no. Nah. But I was coming on, black y'all, I said, you couldn't, I said, you would get a job most anywhere. You didn't have to have no high school education. I know some fellas worked out of U.S. Steel, like they heard I worked there, they didn't even know the name when they saw it. Mm. Couldn't spare a cat, I said, but now, y'all coming on now, y'all gonna need an education. These jobs call for education. Now you can't got some can you go out of that steel flat now unless you got a high school education. And then a high school education ain't enough, but you can't tell them nothing. Mm -hmm. You don't think they listen? No, they won't listen. I told them that stand out there one day right out there, they let us let me speak out there. They won't listen. Mm. What do you think uh, is gonna happen? They go, I know one thing. Whatever happened, whatever happened, they gonna be in bad shape, can't get no job, and they can't, they won't be able to take care of family. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, another movement is necessary to turn that around? They don't need another movement, they need to, they need to, they need to get together and wait for people who are already in the movement. Mm -hmm. All the people. I mean, a, re, a rejuvenation of the movement. Yeah. With, with people like yourself who are veterans. Yeah. Is that a possibility? You think that will happen? No, it don't look like it. You just, you, that's really so much of those stuff going on, drugs and all that kind of stuff. Drugs, drugs. One of our members are down there got killed. I think it was last month you heard about it, Reverend Lewis. He's a nice fellow, nice fellow. Mm -hmm. Cause he didn't want that stuff in the neighborhood where he lived. That's tragic. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's bad. 
Well, Mr. Johnson, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule because you've been very helpful. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, leave us with? Uh, you know, some words of wisdom about the movement, about just uh, where we are today. Well, I tell them, I talk to them, I say, y'all better, better get in something, you better jaw on something. That's the call. When you get into trouble, no way to run. Right over there in Rebel Woods over there. That's where they go. Mm. Parents come over there in Rebel Woods over there. I want Rebel Woods to go out there and do something about it. Mm -hmm. That's where they're running, sir. Yeah, I'm running Rebel Woods. Is yeah. that Abraham or Cal? Abraham Woods. Mm -hmm. He's running to him. Mm -hmm. I know that man get tired. He out there at Miles College trying to see out the church over there. They run to him and worry him. That man be so sleepy sometimes we have a meeting, he'd be set up in the church and we have a meeting, sleep. Mm. Mm. Run down. Yeah, and run down, yeah. Mm. Uh, thank you, Mr. Johnson. We must do this again sometime. All right. All right.